friends, black friends, so I felt very, <coughs> very comfortable. And he was just uh, writing something on the score that he did. Okay. Lena Horne, she was the first celebrity I ever photographed. And uh, she was singing in a club in New York called the Copacabana. And I was introduced to her backstage by a disc jockey friend of mine. And I said, I would someday like to photograph you. And she said, well, how about tonight? Yeah, but you're singing. He said, yeah, but I have an hour to an hour and a quarter between sets. I can come to your studio. I rushed back to my little studio in Greenwich Village. I was a beginning photographer. Nobody knew anything about me. I didn't even know about myself. But she came down and spent two hours with me. And I shot these. These were done five by seven view camera. And I thank God, because otherwise I wouldn't have had the quality. The picture is much sharper than this one, I think okay. But it's one of the few pictures of Lena Horn where you see her freckles. Normally, it's all made up, but not here. So she came down, I shot the picture, she rushed back to the club to finish her gig. I went into the dark room and immediately processed the film, quick wash, dry with a hair dryer, quick proofs, and I rushed back to the club and she was getting off the second set and I showed her the proofs, she liked them. And I said, Miss Horn, I'd like to invite you to my table for a drink. And she looked at me and she said, huh? Don't you know they don't allow the color in the audience? Mm. I couldn't believe it. She was the great you know, the movie star, singer, and the star of that show, and she could not sit in the audience. And the club was controlled by the mafia. They had their clientele, and they didn't want to offend anyone. Okay. Yeah. Here you go with, uh, again, you don't see its face, but of course the uninitiated won't attach anything to this picture. But those who knew Lester Young knew that he always wore that pork pie hat. He was noted for that. And this was an obsession. Jeez, that's really not appropriate. This is a needle sharp picture with Hasselblad, if I recall. And they called him over to the court to the court that he'd been smoking. There was no ashtray, so he put the cigarette on the Coca-Cola bottle and walked away. There was no light on this either. I had to swivel my, my light to illuminate it. I took four frames with the roller flex and paid no attention until I processed the film. But I held the film up and I saw the circle. And to me, the circle is one of the most effective graphic forms. A square wouldn't be, doesn't do it, but a circle does. What, what's the name of the shot? Target? They use, yeah. when you shoot a target, it's a circle. The moon is a circle, the earth, is, everything is a circle. And so I liked it compositionally, even in negative form. Uh, anyway, this is Lester Young. Okay. Did you find uh, more uh, comfort working in a recording studio where there's, of course, the very limited audience and you can move around and oh, sure. instead of oh, sure. there's no question about club it. or concerts? Okay. I mean, you guys, you know what it is to shoot a concert. A lot of them, they say, okay, you can, you're in the pit in front of the stage, you've got to get your pictures because you're on assignment, that's fine. But they let you stay there for the first two lovers or whatever it is today, and then get the hell out. Uh, there's not much you can do except deliver your pictures to the editor and take your check. But create, creative-wise, you can't do a damn thing. Well, in recording session, you have freedom of movement and lighting and everything. Well, I can announce to you that uh, we've got a special assignment for you, and that uh, the rule that applies to all your friends here won't apply to you. And you can take whatever picture you want for the whole concert. This is what we arrange with all the artists that we want to Don't try and imitate this guy. I'll <laughs> <laughs> be your assistant. <laughs> Privilege for the master. <laughs> so, uh, go on with Louis Armstrong. <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's not easy. Yeah. You know, I come here 
I'm going to photograph some of the musicians I've never even heard. What am I going to do? I can't produce the kind of work I produced in 1948. The circumstances aren't there. The flexibility to shoot isn't there. So don't expect to get important terminal images out of what I'm going to shoot. I'll do my best, obviously, but it's a hell of a, a burden to carry. You know? Well, we give you your own uh, protected environment, and you can. Uh, okay. You'll have All right. Room to maneuver. <laughs> Louis backstage, 1960. I like it because you hardly ever see this expression on his face. He's always, ha, ah, ah, you know, handkerchief and smiles. But here he seems to be either completely stoned or <laughs> in meditation, waiting backstage to go on the set. And it's, it's his expression and the whole attitude that he has that, that I like about this, as it differentiates itself from all the other classic images of Louis Armstrong, okay? Backstage on a movie set, the uh, movie was called Paris Blues. Remember that, we shot that in Paris, obviously. And, uh, it's typical Louis, you know, the handkerchief, the cigarette, the champagne, and the wine, and the whole number. And uh, it's a relaxed image. I paid no attention to it whatsoever when I shot it. Didn't even know what I was getting. But later I said, yeah, this sort of combines the elements. Okay, 